What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. Um, what'd you think of last night's episode? You know, I want to say average only because it just seems like it's just more to build towards rebellion. I think it's easy to forget they were heavily promoted, united as we stand, and you know maybe some people forgot that there's a pay per view you know, towards the end of this month. So it just seems like these past couple weeks of impact, just trying to build towards the pay-per-view, which I could understand. Yeah. I I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, I don't think anything really, really stood out this week, but yeah, average I I thought is pretty fair. Um, we did open with that Scarlet and Falaba versus the Desi hit squad match. Um, I thought they booked this pretty well. Um, it's just so funny with, what happened with the whole Eli and intergender wrestling, and then you have the Desi Hit Squad that don't want to fight Scarlet, and it's just one of those things where you know it's the whole real life and kayfabe aspect of it, and it's just it's just such an interesting thing to see play out on TV when similar situation is happening in real life. You know the story of it all, and what I'm trying to understand is, I guess, is the payoff gonna be? Uh, somebody strikes Scarlet, but mm. then you know you'd wonder. You know when you're talking about a story as, as such, you know it would be one that's to the we're we're gonna say Scarlet's the face in all this. That it would you know come at the face's benefit, right. not at the expense. So yeah, I I, I don't get it. Um, you know that one of the commenters that pointed out maybe this this storyline leads to Scarlet. Um, leading uh Fala to uh uh to face Killer Cross so she mm-hmm. turns on Killer Killer Cross so I mean another heel turn <laughs> um but yeah just the whole dynamic of it like and it just leads me to believe cuz later on we'll get into it too like as much as it seems maybe they're open to the idea of the intergender stuff they're not fully on board with it because they've done stuff where we've seen women just kind of get offense or attacking men and with men like not doing anything even in this match you see Rohit why he tried to clothesline Scarlett Mm -hmm. you know and he was unsuccessful when he was in the corner you saw him wanting her wanting him (laughs) her I'm sorry I'm saying him wanting her to go and do the uh, um stink face so to speak yeah so I mean I don't know it's it's a weird way weird story they're trying to tell yeah but I mean um they uh it's funny that uh, Rohit and Scarlett are basically about the same stature, minus the weight difference. But height-wise, they're about the same. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, that it's a little more realistic if the two of them were to go at it rather than Raj, who is uh, quite the big man. And somebody had pointed out in the uh, the YouTube comments, um, actual you know, for the highlights of last night, they were being critical of her ring gear. And, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of you know a lot of people are all on board with the women's revolution stuff, and you know they like to see the women wrestlers actually be taken as serious as women wrestlers. And I guess with Scarlett, you know, since she's been on board, it just seems more of like a sex appeal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna look, dive too much deep into that, but yeah, it's just weird. Um, you know, like I said, I I really believe she could be used right now in the knockouts division, but I guess this is the story they kind of want to tell so we just have to follow along yeah no that's fair but yeah i think there was a spot where she did try to do a move on raj and she couldn't do it and then she ended up just hitting with a jawbreaker to get him uh kind of woozy um we we've noticed over the last couple of weeks that uh anytime the follow ba has been in a match that i think it was don that heavily pushed that he has lost weight so i don't know if that's something they wanted him to do or something he wanted to do on his own yeah, I didn't catch that part. Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe they have some plans, or maybe you could just be like, "Hey, we're gonna use you on TV. We need you to look like a wrestler." Like, I, I don't know. Um, I could see that, but then that's not consistent with some of the booking decisions. Yeah. Because if you're talking about, you know, the old school booking, where like, you know, you need to look like a wrestler, like, <laughs> you know, in the face heel dynamic. I mean, we kind of see with that. So, um, yeah, uh, but no credit, credit to him. Um, like I said, 
I, if that's the case, or just say himself, he decided, hey, I want to, you know, be in the best shape I could possibly can. Mm-hmm. No, he's rewarded. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, put in the hard work, he definitely deserved to be rewarded. We did see him hit a suicide dive. That was a cool spot. Uh, Scarlet held the ropes, and uh, he hit Raj and Rohit on the outside. Um, we did take uh, hear Don take a shot at KM, saying that uh, this is the best partner that Fala has ever had, and this is not the first time he's done it. So maybe there's a little uh, tension there. Well, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk about it towards the end. But you you know when uh, what was I saying? I'm sorry. Um, when KM has sent the tweet that he had. Uh, you know, he was thanking everyone. He didn't mention anyone of this current regime. So, mm-hmm. of course, people thought he was taking a shot. So, and then to hear Don taking subtle jabs at him, I mean. I mean, this yeah, isn't we, the first time. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and like I said, I know we'll get into it, but it's just, you know, we don't know what happens behind the scenes. Like, some of these people who leave and stuff, you know, what bad blood could occur backstage. You know, a lot of times people are so quick to jump on the talent. Like, you know, why are you trashing management? Which I agree, like, to run to Twitter and air the dirty laundry is not the best. But then, you know, <laughs> if management is going on TV, taking jabs at you, I mean, you do have to defend yourself, you know, so. I don't know, man. Don Callis keeps telling us every week that he's just a commentator. <laughs> uh, playing the fans is fools a timeless I, classic I, i'll try to refrain from going on a don rant because you know how <laughs> i feel about him yeah I, I don't know we'll get into that later with the whole situation with management um but yeah they end up uh scarlet and bot hit a double uh bonsai drop on raj for the win but uh you know i mean we've talked about it time again there, there was so much potential for the desi hit squad and it's just a shame you wonder what went wrong because this I remember when Don was uh, hyping them up because we used to get the vignettes because before all that it was just um, then he was Hakeem Zane. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he was wrestling by himself. Um, I don't remember. I, don't, I think he was probably on the losing effort. But, yeah. But then he, you know, changes the name to Rohit Raju. And then, you know, he kept talking about or. I don't even think he was talking about it too much, but they would talk about it on commentary. So the way that it was, you know, spoke about, you thought they would be, you know, somewhat of a big deal. I actually thought they'd be uh, one of the main uh, threats to LAX. And, Mm. you know, I was totally wrong. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Well, there was. Oh, no, go ahead. No, you just wonder what went wrong. Um, I kind of believe, too, maybe the way that they were brought in, I think. Anytime you're talking about somebody of color or, you know, different of uh, ethnicity, you know, running the same tired, evil foreign gimmicks, mm-hmm. like they're, they're old. I thought the one thing maybe they could have done, and I don't know if you had watched the G- GW, GW, I'm sorry, GFW <laughs> Amped episode where they had, a, um, I think they're in WWE now, the Singh Brothers. Mm-hmm. They were the Bollywood boys. Yep. And the way they, they were pushed is like rich guys, you know, rich guys. I don't know if they were faces or heels, but it was different because it was different from the whole evil foreign or gimmick or, you know, a lot of times where they have some of the Middle Eastern um, characters with the heavy uh, uh, accent, you know, just totally stereotypical. Like, why do you always have to push it like that? Give us something different. And they did with them. So, yeah, you just wonder what what happened because that was a Don idea. Yeah, because there was originally supposed to be like four members and then, well, I guess five when you added Raj into the mix because I, I guess he wasn't originally part of the plan. Uh, there was two other guys that they had and they never showed up on TV and then they were quietly moved over to the alumni section. But, uh, yeah, no, they fell into the trap of booking it the way that it shouldn't have been booked. And that was one of my fears from the beginning. And, you know, I guess it's the easy way to do things, and that's what they did. Well, I mean, I think it's just they probably on paper, they had a plan, but like many things, the execution. That's that's a fair point. Uh, so then we get the Lucha Brothers hyping their match with Eli and Eddie tonight. Uh, we get a segment with uh, training with the Deaners, and we will see them next week. Um, it's, we actually got two of them, two segments with them, so it seems like they're uh, they're putting some some time and effort into these guys, at least f- on the promo front. But, you know, we just had the North debut, and there was nothing with them on the show. So 
there's that. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting with the Deaners. I, I mean, I like what they're doing. I think it's funny. They're a little gimmick. Um, but will it translate? Who knows? We will just I, have I, to wait and see. I feel they're one of these teams. It's going to be a wave from what I've seen on Explosion. I think, you know, the value is going to be um, when they eventually, well, if they eventually split up and they push the, the other guy. I think he on the Indies, he's what, Jake something, Jake something. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they push, it looks like he's got a good physique on him. Yeah, where they're going to push him alone. I, I think that's what's going to end up happening down the road. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the their whole videos is uh, what's the guy's name? Cody Diener, I think the one guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's kind of uh, pushing the other guy, and he's you know dr- drinking a beer and things like that, taking it easy. I mean, they're, it, they're doing funny stuff. I enjoy them, but you know, it's all about the execution. And we'll see. Uh, see how that ha- goes. Uh, then we have Eli and Eddie backstage, and they're you know talking about beating the uh, Lucha Brothers tonight. And, uh, yeah, that is our main event for the evening. Uh, we have Tommy Dreamer backstage, and he talks about the similarities between himself and Madman Fulton. He makes references to uh, Fulton's time in NXT. But eventually he says that he has fought bigger and more dangerous men than him. So they're hyping their match for tonight. And then we have uh, Moose versus Desmond Xavier. Uh, much like the other matches, I, I enjoyed this match. I thought they booked it pretty well. Um, one of my... Favorite spots in the match is when uh, Dez flips over the top rope and Moose just catches him, slams him into the steps, and then power bombs him onto the other Rascal members. Um, and eventually, the Rascal members end up causing a distra- distraction, and Dez rolls him up and picks up the win. Um, I don't know. The roll up was kind of weird, and I don't see how he could have possibly pinned him with that maneuver. You know, I thought he was going to do a bridge after, you know, like sometimes when mm-hmm. you see that type of roll up and then yeah. like they kind of the bridge back. Yeah, I liked this. Um, it kind of made me um, wonder why didn't they ever, you know, follow up? And th- this was part of the old regime, so I can't attach this to the new one. But they never followed up um, from Desmond Xavier's win uh, from that super x cup a couple years back Mm -hmm. and then even then they had something where he kept challenging cage when cage was the x division champion they never did that anything yeah either because i think out of this group if this and maybe this is just one match that i'm looking too much into but he would be the guy like the solo guy i know they were pushing him and uh wentz as a tag team and trey is the solo guy but i really think it should be desmond xavier because he has so much untapped potential and a part of me was mad when they had, you know, put them as a group because I thought, you know, him as a lone, a standalone guy. I mean, he was a guy that really could be a breakout star, but you know, they just throw him in in his group. I just felt like he would have been stuck. But yeah, man, um, I like this feud. Uh, I think it, you know Moose has been phenomenal in this, mm-hmm. and I really wonder what's the match if they're gonna have a match at Rebellion. I'm hoping for a three on one, <laughs> but uh, um, we'll just have yeah. to wait and see. I would think some sort of handicap match or maybe like a gauntlet match. Something like that they could do. But uh, Moose does cut a promo a little later on, which we'll get to. Um, but, you know, I, I thought they did a good job with this. All the booking has been consistent in these three matches. And obviously it was going to lead to one of the members getting the, the upper hand or the victory. So it leads to a match at Rebellion. Um, then we have Kiera backstage. Rosemary shows up. They have a back and forth. You know, they both bring up their own good points. And Kiera says, there's always been two of us in this fight. Rosemary says, so be it. And then she attacks Kiera. And then she says, now there is only one. So I don't know where they're going with this. Did you take this as a hill turn for Rosemary or it was just... Mm, Not really. I just kind of wish that they would stop making mention of Ali now. Um, I well, like just say the bunny, right? I think that's what they said. Yeah, but just you know, because she's no longer with the company, you know, no longer with the company. Obviously, I think when somebody departs, like I get it, like you know, I guess in her case, they kind of knew knew because they de- you know decided not to resign her, but you know, stop making mentions of her. Well, I mean, I think she's the only bridge. To you know, between Kiara and Rosemary, so that's probably why they do it. Yeah, but I don't know. It just comes across as lazy to me because she's no long she's no longer there, and you know it's, everyone knows. So it's like move on. Um, I don't. 
you know, and I'm sure this is still going to continue. One's going to guess it's going to be Kiera versus Rosemary, but mm. where's Sue Young in all this? I, I really thought that's the thing that you could have some long build between Sue and Rosemary, but now with this, I mean, um, one would assume Kiera is going to align with Sue and they're going to be facing Rosemary or. I, I I don't know. I just yeah. Like, I, I mean, I I thought once they killed off Allie, like we, you know, kind of move on from all this. I mean, I guess you know the Rosemary and Sue part aspect of it would have been fine, but you know, and with Kiara, you know, we thought Kiara they didn't have anything for her to do. Now they're attaching her to this. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I, I, can, <laughs> I can see them doing Rosemary versus Sue at the pay per view, and then Kiara reveals herself to be one of the undead brides and she causes costs rosemary the match and then we get that uh, rosemary versus kiara feud but eh. i mean i mean they're they're trying to trying to get so much out of this whole undead realm stuff man <laughs> yeah and that's that's led to something that we me and you at least aren't particularly fond of which we will get into a little later on um and then we see moose backstage he is pissed at the outcome of the match he tells them t- the the truck to edit or cut the footage of him losing on national tv but then he says you want to gang up on moose two can play at that game so we will see where that goes and we see tessa and she is at the restaurant and she says gail doesn't want tessa to surpass her and that is her motivation behind costing her those matches uh tessa brings up her husband and you know gail for screwing a uh, famous chef uh, and if he knows that who the G- real Gail Kim is and who she's become today. Um, so Tessa then invades the restaurant looking for her husband. Um, he's obviously not there, but this ends with Tessa leaving her mark by dumping food all over people. And she says, Gail Kim wanted to make it personal. Well, now it's personal. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This segment really didn't do too much for me. I mean, I thought Tessa was fine in it, but as far as the motivation for it to happen... Eh. Kind I mean, of essentially, essentially, she just went in there to trash uh, her husband's restaurant. Like, if she would have went in and say the um, Robert would have Robert Irvine would have been there and she would have struck him, I think then you know. But then again, too, and without diving in just too much deeper, making it such an issue. I mean, her husband is a big dude, so. Mm. For Tessa to go up there and just try to punk him, I don't think anybody would believe that, you know, because he could easily toss Tessa. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I liked the presentation of it all. I thought that was this was cool. Um, you know, Tessa's very polished. She's one of the you know very uh, polished wrestlers on the roster. So the way she carried carried herself in the segment was fine. But you know, it just kind of just leads you to believe, like you know, we're getting the match in a couple of weeks, like. You know, I could really see Gail going over. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's just, a good possibility. You know, the way you know the story that's been told. Uh, you know, I I think too, and maybe they didn't want to um, go down this road, but we had seen before when uh, Gail, I forgot who she was feuding with, but somebody attacked her sister, mm-hmm. and, and I thought if you had get uh, Tessa. Uh, you know, go to the residence or something and attack Gail's family. I think then that would have been, you know, a little bit more. Because if anything, wouldn't her husband be more pissed than Gail would? Because that's his establishment. Yeah, you, you would think. <laughs> yeah. I don't so, know. but yeah, I mean, no. it, it, the, as far as the, the segment goes, I mean, I just think the way that she carried herself, it was um, that part w- was nice. Yeah. No, I, I will agree with that. You know, Tessa is like you had said, one of the few polished stars that impact has on the roster that is able to, you know, do well in these segments. I think it was just the atmosphere and I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, just didn't do, do anything for me, but it could just be because I'm not a huge fan of this feud. Plain and simple. You know, you just, you feel Tessa can be used, you know, somewhere else. Um, I could understand, you know, trying to get her away from the, the, um, knockouts title scene for the time being but i mean you know feud with rosemary um feud with kara hogan like i think there's just so many different paths you could take take her like like she should be able to beat gail you know Mm -hmm. but but um who knows i mean maybe they think this is something that could be drawn out and they do like a you know we get three matches out of this but yeah i'm I'm with you on that yeah 
Well, that's the thing. Like, you take Tessa out of the equation, and all of a sudden the knockout championship kind of feels like an afterthought. Well, the person they put it on, I, I mean, I you know, while I was a fan of it just because it gives us another, you know, well, obviously she's champion, but, you know, down the road, another person who's always going to be kind of a threat, but she's, you know, the champion, and Ty has been so tied up with what's going Johnny, on with Johnny, yeah. Johnny Impact that the title's been hostage. Mm-hmm. Cause I can't, I really can't recall now, you know, I have trouble thinking, and I'm sure you can point this out to me. She's probably only had a couple matches since she's been champion, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty crazy. Maybe had a match or two during the Mexico tapings. I don't even remember. And then she defended once against Jordan in Vegas, and then she had the match with Madison tonight, but that wasn't for the title. So, and then she gave and she gave the the match in Mexico. That was the one that she gave Tessa her rematch, right? Uh, right, right, yes. So yeah, so what? So that's what three matches, and you and she's been champion since January. (laughs) I mean, you had the United We Stand match, but that was a house show, so we know no titles were changing. Oh yeah, and then yeah, yeah, okay. So I mean, four, but yeah, it just doesn't seem like you know she's been so tied up, tied up with that. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I said on here, we've seen at times when they want to clear the way for certain individuals, they clear the way. (laughs) Yep. That is for sure. Um, then we see Gail backstage. She's on her phone with her husband. She isn't going to be pressing charges. Gail then says that Tessa reminds her of herself when she was younger and she had to learn her lesson the hard way. She said pressing charges isn't going to teach her a lesson. And Gail is going to have to do that. I mean, I, I thought this was this was better. At least, you know, Gail has some motivation there because the similarities between the two of them. And she's the one going to teach her the lesson, which leads to the match. Uh, does Gail have a stake in the restaurant, or is it only her husband? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question, man. Uh, I mean, you know, I would think he'd be the one pressing <laughs> charges, but hey, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not everything can uh, have that realism there. And we have Madman Fulton versus Tommy Dreamer. Callahan obviously gets involved early on. He ends up getting ejected. Um, all I know is that Fulton goes over. I, I kind of tuned out a little bit during this match. You know, I don't understand why they had him, <clears throat> excuse me, face Tommy Dreamer, like, right away. Um, I'm a fan of when you're trying to build someone, especially, like, a guy of his stature. You know, let him face some enhancement guys and just demolish them. And then you build towards, you know, your Tommy Dreamers or some of the lower level, lower, lower level, low, lower level um, wrestlers. Um I liked it just for the simple fact. It looks like it was just a showcase for Fulton, which, you know, I was wondering, and I meant to look it up. Like, I'm surprised they let him go. I wonder what what was the reason. Um, you know, nice tall guy. Um, you know, he was oh, just, he just... he had gotten injured, and then I believe he was replaced. Oh, okay. Oh, that that sucks. <laughs> I, think, I think that was that was what happened. But you know, who knows? Like you said, behind the scenes, we don't know what happened. So, but. Yeah, um, nonetheless, this is just to give Fulton a win, um, you know, and I guess it gives, makes OVE as a group look strong, like we had talked about, mm-hmm. you know, them adding him, it kind of gives gives the group some respect again, because essentially they just kind of seem, well, in the Chris Brothers case, you know, they were always, you know, on their backs, you know, jobbing right and left, and then, you know, you got Callahan, who, you know, is a promo guy, but it seemed like he loses almost every few that he starts, so... You know, this is a guy who kind of can give them some credibility again, and then even the post match, um, mm-hmm. I thought was pretty pretty cool. Um, with uh, Ov standing tall, yeah, yeah. He uh, Willie Mack comes down with a the chair, then the Chris come out, Rich Swan comes out, Sammy comes back out. He chokes out Swan with the bat, and then he hits him with a pile driver, and then he puts Dreamer's arm between the chair and hits the chair with the bat. So again, good segment with Ov standing tall. Yeah, this is one of the feuds, um, well, the match between Callahan and uh, Swan that I'm looking most forward to just because um, the aftermath of it all. Mm -hmm. Um, I really think this is, and I know I use this a lot with a lot of individuals, this is a now or never for Sammy. Um, If he's going to win any gold, I think this is going to be the gold that he captures. Um, And that's not a knock on him, not not that I don't think he's world champion material because I do, but... 
I, I just feel like with a lot of things, you know, there's um, a window for it. And when they miss that opportunity, then it's kind of just gone. And I kind of feel with him, they kind of missed it. They, yeah. um, you know, he, I could see him, you know, getting a t- title shot here and there, but I don't think they'll ever put the world title on him. Probably not. I, I think they did miss an opportunity with Callahan and uh, Johnny Impact when he was a face. I think that would have been a good feud. Right. And, you know, that's why I was, you know, so kind of down on them turning him hill. Like, they, I feel like they didn't get enough mileage with him in as for as, as much as, you know, people talk about how corny he is. Like, there were people he could have faced. You know, we mm-hmm. talked about, you know, with a Congo Kong, like you just mentioned, Sammy Callahan. You know, they could have had so many people before they even had the cross where, you know, where, you know, him facing cross. And then finally you do the cage and then, you know, you can do the hill turn then. But I think they jumped the gun. And now we see, you know, like I said, they clear the way for certain individuals. It's just cage versus versus uh, uh, Johnny Impact. Maybe, you know, some of these guys that we're talking about will face cage once cage becomes champion. But um, it, I don't think it'd be the same, have the same appeal that it would if they were facing Johnny. Yeah, no, no, I think you're right about that. Uh, Then we had the second Diener's promo of the night, and then we get an update on Tommy Dreamer. Swan thanks Willie for having his back. Swan leaves, Cross walks up and tells, yeah, Willie, thank you for having Swan's back. And Cross says, every time Swan gets into trouble, Willie has to clean it up. Swan gets the glory, and uh, Willie looks like a moron. They have a really good back and forth between the two of them. Willie takes a, uh, you know, he's like, what is is your deal here, Cross? You you got stuff with Johnny, you got things with Moose. He takes a shot at Moose. He says he looks like someone's uncle that showed up to a party that he wasn't invited to. Um, And then he challenges Cross to a match next week. I I really thought this is something they could have built a little longer and then had a match between the two of them at Rebellion. Yeah, instead of just kind of just throw something together. Yeah. Or, I mean, I even thought they could have done something between Willie and Madman Fulton, too. Yeah, that that would have been something. Um, you know, you got OVE or, you know, members of OVE challenging, you know, some of Swan's, uh, um, you know, people, some of Swan's allies, you know, which Willie and Tommy Dreamer to kind of build up the match at Rebellion. But, mm. I mean, this is the route they want to go. Um it gives Cross something to do, who unfortunately seems like he's kind of fell in the background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then we have your highlight of the night, Taya versus Madison. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, um, here, I'll let you take it before I give my <laughs> two cents. All right, I'll just run down what happened. Um, so Taya comes out and she cuts a promo before the match, running down Canada. And then, you know, she says she isn't going to wrestle tonight. At this point, Madison attacks her. The bell rings. We have a different referee, right? I think it wasn't uh, one of the normal three that they usually rotate. I didn't um, even notice that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, at one point, Taya ends up trying to leave. Jordan Grace comes out. She throws her back in the ring. Uh, Taya gets distracted by Grace, and Madison rolls her up for another victory. Ooh, 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 ooh. Where did it even begin? Um, all right, my my bad. Go ahead and finish. I wanted to no, I, I did. I, I'm I was setting it all up for you, man. <laughs> all right. Um, just from the promo, I found the promo just to be horrible. Um. It just it seemed like a Forest Hill promo, you know. She's uh, trash in Canada, and it was just terrible. Then you have Madison come out, and and you know they have their match, and Madison gets the win via distraction from Grace. Um, I thought it was weird that you had Grace attack attacking Taya. Normally, that's a disqualification. I don't know if it happened uh, prior to the bell ringing. I, but I think she just threw her back in. That was it. Yeah, but still, though, normally like that, they would throw the match out. But, nah. hey, you know, rules are circumstantial. Well, you know, that's <laughs> true. Um, and then, you know, she Taya's still worried about Grace when when uh, uh, Madison's in there. Madison gets the roll up. Now, I get it. You know, this is the second week where we see Madison, um, you know, win via shenanigans, outside shenanigans. But it still doesn't you know, dismiss the fact that 
you know, she's been back in, in her three matches. She's got a uh, number one contenders match, which I guess, you know, she lost rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And then she's beaten Tessa for the third time and Tyre for the second time. And my only thing is, is just it gives a bad, um, a ba- it's a bad look just because you think about why she came back. Um, she was l- let go you know, due to, I guess, creative differences. And, you know, was we she- talk about. Did she quit or was she, did they actually, maybe they mutually parted ways? I I think they mutually parted ways. Yeah. And, you know, just because she was unhappy with her position with the company. Right. Now, you know, like a lot of things, and we talk about this, like, you know, we can't have a double standard with stuff. You know, we'll sit here and, you know, some, and I'm, I'm not lumping everybody in, but we'll sit here and be critical of Eli for not doing what management wants and, you know, going to business for himself. And then they let him go. It's like rightfully so, where we have this participant who, who, uh, um, you know, ma- management over there had a vision for her. She didn't s- see the same way. So she just, dis- they decided to mutually, mutually apart. And then she comes back and, you know, right away, she's just thrusted in a role where, you know, these are two wins, even though they're distraction wins that, you know, somebody like a Kiera or if they had someone that they wanted to build could benefit from. And you could get behind it because, yeah, it's, you know, it's a cheap win, but it's just something that could go a long way for. Her. And I just keep using Kiera just because she seems like the only. <laughs> she is the only one. Yeah, the young face. But like, you know, she could really benefit from those two wins. And, you know, that's something that you could put on her resume. And then not only that, down the road, if you wanted to revisit and that's something that she would be able to do. But, you know, it, I just think for those who those who actually thought Madison coming in to help the other knockouts, um, I think just she, she more came back to help the division and being that um, she's probably going to be in the title picture relatively soon. Um, I think we both talked about it. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be a path for her to challenge Grace at Slammiversary for the Knockouts Championship. Yeah. Yeah, because I would assume that is probably the next pay per view after Rebellion. But no, uh, I agree. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Uh, so then we have Johnny Impact. He's interviewed by the investigative reporter. We see Johnny Bravo with him too. I guess he's cleaning Johnny Impact's pool. Um, you know, this basically ends with Impact saying that Cage will never live up to his potential. Yeah. I'm, Wait, I'm, the I, the, re- the referee was cleaning his pool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I only caught bits and pieces of this, so I didn't see the whole thing. But yeah, yeah, that's that's what I got from it. I mean, if anybody wants to fill fill us in on what actually took place, then uh, please be do please do let us know what happened. Um, and then we have Cage coming out, and he's yelling and grabs Callus. Callus, you know, obviously. Keeps telling us that he is just a commentator and that he's going to call Scott Demore. Um, so we go backstage and Scott Demore picks up the phone and uh, he tells Callus that is tells Demore to leave. He's told Cage, he told Cage that he has a plan for him as far as the ref goes for rebellion. Scott Demore then says, "All right, so you're saying that moron is backstage looking for me? So why are they running down their face right now? Um, I, I don't get that." Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, that's what I think Johnny had said a couple weeks ago. He just, I think he said that that was Cage's motivation as he was a moron. Um, and then Cage comes up. He wants to know the plan. Cage ends up grabbing Scott Demore. Lance Storm gets between them. And then Demore makes Storm the guest referee. So another pay-per-view where, and I guess the difference in this is because this is the main event versus just a regular match, but will we get somebody from the Impact family um, getting a title match or having a title match where there's a special guest referee? Yep. Um, Which will probably end up in shenanigans. Well, I think it's going to be shenanigans any other way. I think when we preview the pay-per-view, we'll probably get more into it, but... Mm -hmm. I'm one can only hope that they have the match and you know the less Lance Storm interference the better um I think you know having him interfere and in being the, the reason that Cage becomes champion is poor cuz it's been done before but um that's not going to stop them if they if they wanted to do that but yeah uh 
Uh, I mean, once one of Dawn's buds, I mean, we're kind of mm-hmm. seeing it. So, um, yeah. And another former ECW guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of part of part of me was thinking that, you know, maybe they have some kind of thing between Cage and Lance Storm because Lance Storm was, you know, telling him so much about integrity, being a professional and all this and that. And yeah, so um yeah, that's our main event. Uh, special guest referee with Lance Storm. I mean, I'm a fan of Storm. I always was, and you know, it's not a knock at him. It's just, yeah, it's just the same old story. I mean, it just why if they were gonna do a gimmick? Because I, I did feel like if this is gonna be the blow off of the seems like forever chase for the title, you know, do a cage match or or something you know i didn't think a special guest referee but um this is the, what they decided to go yeah go with i mean honestly if they were gonna do something i would rather them just have cage destroy him After i know getting right screwed so many times you would think that would be a logical outcome just have like a brock lesnar type match i know we always talk about it like and I, I guess that's where i take issue with a lot of things because you know we talk about you know why not them taking chances or doing things different but then you know they talk about trying to um you know that used to be the moniker with scott what what, i mean not scott i'm sorry with don is they had like an old school booking mentality but it just seems so inconsistent when you see some of the decision the booking decisions so um yeah i mean could you imagine they just have a match where it just goes like two three minutes where cage just destroys johnny impact I mean, that'd be fine, but nah, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that's how they built the guy up. You build him all the way up till he gets to the main event picture with a guy who is visibly smaller than him, and he keeps getting screwed over. So why not have him just destroy him? It's not out of the realm that he doesn't get screwed over again. It's true. (laughs) It's true. And then Johnny has another guy in his back pocket. (laughs) Right. Setting up for the RVD title reign, <laughs> which we did read in an interview with, I believe it was Cage, right? That uh, RVD was somebody who he really would have who he wanted to face. I mean, there is a pathway um, either or I'm guessing it, it would uh, make more sense to do that if Johnny's champion, because I picture them once they coordinate Cage you know, they're going to want give him a long grain. So to give him a long grain and then only have him drop it to RVD. But, I mean, hey, you never know. <laughs> ah, especially considering they're going into Philly. Yep. And that crowd will pop for that. All right. And then we have the main event. Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards versus the Lucha Brothers. Um, I mean, I, I think this match was a little too short. But, uh, I mean, I think the end game here was to really push that Eli Drake turn on Eddie Edwards post-match. Because we saw LAX come out for a little distraction. Eli almost rolls up Pentagon. And then Eli goes to use the kendo stick, but he misses. And then Pentagon and Phoenix hit the spike package pile driver. Uh, We see LAX and the Lucha Brothers battle to the back. Uh, Eli comfort, I mean, Eddie comforts Eli after the loss. Eli goes and, you know, hugs him. And then eventually Eli attacks Eddie from behind. And then he goes to town with the kendo stick. So, I mean, that was the big story here that was supposed to lead to a match at Rebellion. However, two weeks ago, Eli Drake was fired from the company. So, yeah. Well, before I get into that part, you know, once again, you know, we see the dynamic just change, like, because we were, we both kind of uh, looked at LAX and this as being the faces, yet they come out to distract the so-called heels, so we just see, like, nothing's really, like, fluid. Um, You know, I watched this match, and I could see why Eli was uh, displeased, like, it wasn't, I, I you, as I was uh, watching it, and when I felt like it was, you know, going to you know, have a finish. I was like, Eli's probably eating the pin. I could see it. You mm. know. <laughs> so one way or another, he's gonna take their double T move. Um, but yeah, I I just kind of found myself, you know, his frustration, like the way that they booked him. Like I really feel like there's a personal thing backstage where Don didn't like, you know, Don didn't like him. And it just kind of just showed during his whole tenure. And 
you know, I know, you know, now and it, it's unfortunate for somebody like Eddie where you have this angle now and Eddie can't ever really get any comeuppance now. Dude because, just re-signed with the company. <laughs> right? And and he can't get no comeuppance now because um, Eli's gone. And I'm sure they might run some stuff where they cut some promo trash in Eli. And, you know, for the people that are, you know, pro company, you know, yeah, you know. Because I know the biggest thing is, well, he didn't uh, listen to his employer. They're independent contractors. This isn't like a nine-to-five job. Because a nine to five job, just like he was unhappy, when you're unhappy, you can leave. You know, when you're under contract, you can't just leave like that. So, right. um, but yeah, uh, it, it it seemed like it was a match just more to to um, a to get it over with mm-hmm. because they wanted to go back to LX and Lucha Brothers since that's a match at Rebellion, and then the kind of uh, the post match angle just where you have Eli turning on Eddie. Would- which is funny because I, at least I didn't notice, and maybe they did say it. But was there any indication that this, that the match at Rebellion wasn't going to happen between LAX and the Lucha Brothers? Like I feel like they didn't even mention that. Like, oh, this could be a triple threat. I mean, I know Eli said something backstage about it being a triple threat, but as far as commentary goes, I don't think they mentioned anything. No, I mean, I think when you know when they tape so far in advance, uh, I think it's those little things and stuff because. You know, already people watching this, we know the outcome because they've been promoting even, you know, when they've been promoting Rebellion, you know, they didn't put, you know, LAX challenging Lucha Brothers or Eli Drake and and, uh, Eddie, you know, just to kind of give that impression like, hey, maybe there's going to be a title change. No, it's still the same match. So right away, as somebody who's watching, you know, Eli and Eddie, you know, don't have a snowball's chance at winning. And then let alone knowing, too, that Eli um, is no longer with the company. And that's always the hardest thing. I just I believe just for me, um, when you're watching sometimes some of these people who have departed and unfortunately they're they're uh have taped segments it's hard to really invest in because like i said if they're in some type of angle you're not going to really kind of see it uh um come to a conclusion because they're no longer a part of the company Mm -hmm. and that's why i just say with eddie it's like poor eddie and you know i guess people were gonna blame eli um could they have handled the situation better, both parties? I do believe so. But, um, you know, that's what we got. And, unfortunately, this is the outcome of it all. Yeah. I mean, especially when they had all this in place, you would have thought there would have been different measures they would have taken. But what happened happened. And uh, we will see what happens with Eddie Edwards as far as the pay-per-view goes. But, uh, yeah, I agree with with all that stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> pretty much the show huh yeah that, that, that was the show like i said like you said said in the beginning this is pretty much them just building more for rebellion and it's going to be interesting to see what they do because obviously that eli and eddie match was probably supposed to take place so they're going to have to fill that with something else maybe a random exhibition match that's possible um yeah they you know that I, I don't know. It, it seems like the card is pretty much set. Um, maybe they throw something in there, but um, yeah, we hey, we got some uh, departures this week, right? We did. Um, so we had Gersinder Singh leave the company. Now he was on Explosion last week. Mm-hmm. It was it was who was the uh, combination in the Desi Head Squad? It was him, and then it was somebody else. I couldn't pronounce the name. Oh, really? It was two. It was huh. That's interesting. Yeah, he. Uh, I I couldn't pronounce it, but yeah, he had uh, asked for his release, and it was crazy because. <clears throat> yeah, I think I want to say I don't know if it was the same day or the day before we seen Luke Harper, um, uh, from from the E request his release, and mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> right away everybody was like. Uh, uh, see, you know, people are asking for their releases, and then I think I told you, I said, Watch, this was, I said, this is gonna be a hold my beer moment, and then we see with Gersinder Singh. Um, and then also, we got KM, uh, I want to say about a week ago. Um, it he didn't straight up announce it, but just from what we heard with commentary on this episode, and then what he had tweeted out thanking the Jarrett's and Sanjay Dutt, um, mm-hmm. it seems like he's gone. And then I think you pointed out that Grado was in the alumni section. Yep. Yeah, he was moved there as well. 
So, Which is funny because um, Katarina is still in the uh, the knockout section, but we haven't seen her since Vegas of last year, back in when they brought Grayson, right? And they had their little feud. That was about it. I think so. And, you know, I'm a believer, too. I think there's probably more people who are no longer with the company. But if they went out and started announcing, hey, you know, so such and such left or we think in such and such in the best future endeavors, like it's going to look bad as, you know, why is everybody leaving? Um, so I think just think sometimes we're going to see certain individuals, they announce it and then other individuals, they quietly leave. You know, that way there's no like negative uh, um you know, negative viewpoint. Yeah, from the public. Um, I don't know if you want to get into each of the individuals as far as like their impact, so to speak, and any big losses, etc. Well, it was funny because both of them had tweeted out at least months ago with a a number. Generally, we thought it was how long was left on their Impact Wrestling contract, and then to find out that they both ended up leaving, I, I guess that's what it was. And Conley did this too, right? Yes. And that was, that was the one thing that I just kind of just noticed. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we're seeing that with certain talents that they're unhappy. You know, they're quick to point out how many days they have left of their contract. And, you know, to do that, it doesn't sound like somebody who's looking to re-up. If anything, it looks like somebody who's ready to go and can't wait. So, you know, that was always like a telling sign for me. You know, to see, you know, see the, like that. I know with KM, KM was uh, big on that. So, you know, it just kind of just made me believe like there was some, you know, displeasure with his role in the company. Yeah, I think that, I mean, he said that he was recovering from injuries and all things like that, but then he was still going to wrestle for Russell Pro. So, yeah, I don't think he's done. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything on him, but if not, I was just going to just throw some stuff in real quick. Well, I mean, he does have, I think he did train with Kenny Omega, so you never know if he could be used in some sort of role with AEW. Yeah. Um, I mean, before we even get into that, all I was just going <laughs> to add, <laughs> add is, um, you know, with the three, I mean, Grado, you know, he was always going to be a comedy person. Mm -hmm. And I think now with Fala, even though, you know, they use Fala a little bit more in, in some serious capacity, like, you know, it's e easily replaceable. Um, So that's not no big loss. You know, with KM, I, you know, would he have ever been world champion? You know, in Impact, I never want to say, no, this person's never going to be world champion because I really think you can make anyone a world champion here if you give them the right right build but mm -hmm. just in terms i think he was kind of like his uh gimmick was probably mid card at best yeah oh yeah but you know like we've mentioned with having no mid card there's really nowhere for for him to go and i thought he found a new life with um team wow. with Fala. yeah and you know they were riding high on momentum um they even had put that book out that uh the company f for some weird reason didn't you know, capitalize on and promoting it, you know, which was uh, silly. Um, but, you know, there, he could have been used, you know, there was a role for him and, like, they never just saw him anything more as just a, a you know, essentially a comedy guy. Mm -hmm. So I, I just kind of just feel like we're always talking about, you, you, well, not us, but, you know, people are always saying, who can they bring in? Who can they bring in? And it's like, you know, you have certain people that you don't even give the shot. Like, I'd love to see some of these people get the shot. And then if it doesn't work, then you bring in somebody. But right. they don't go that route. And then even with Gersinder Singh, I thought when he originally had signed, you know, I, I, I guess on the Indies, he goes by Tony Cage. And yeah. I, I figured I was like, they're going to change his name because you got Brian Cage. Um, it looked like he had a nice look to him. And I thought that when they ran the story where he got kicked out of the Desi hit squad, that gave them an opportunity to either write him off. Cause I had thought originally he had departed then or, uh, repackage him, right. and, you know, as a singles person and, you know, get him away from the whole hysterical, typical evil foreigner type gimmick and just have him stand alone, stand alone on his own, you know, and they didn't do that. And it just leads me to believe, as with a lot of people, like we're going to see more and more like people who haven't been used. I always bring up Congo Kong, for example. Um, you know, they're probably just going to just keep them on the shelf to their contracts expire and then just not renew them. Yeah. 
So, and it's just, it's just unfortunate because we're always just talking about like, give us something new, like something that we can get behind. But, you know, it just seems like there's only, you know, a certain core group of people that, you know, get the, get the time on TV, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I could have sworn Congo actually got a match during the tapings that they just recently did in Windsor. So he may be on TV next week. Yeah. But, you know, it just leads you, you, you makes you wonder, like, I'm pretty sure if I am if I was a betting man in the next couple of months, I guarantee you he's not no longer with the company. Oh yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you because the last time we saw him was what, maybe July, post or a little after, maybe August anniversary. It was that vignette um, that they had. We're not got thrown but, into a pool. <laughs> yeah, that was the last time we saw him, and that I want to say that was uh, sometime in the fall. Yeah. Maybe uh, there was also the news of uh, Mahabali Shera coming back to the company. Um, so he, I mean, uh, I don't know how the, how they're going to go with this because he was, I think, with NXT for a short period of time. I think he worked the house show circuit but never made it onto TV. Um, he seems to have, you know, cut weight and he looks like he's in really good shape. Um, so he could be someone they bring in to put with the. Desi hit squad and build them up kind of like they did with uh, Fulton in the uh, NOVE. I mean, if they wanted to do that, I guess that way you can try to salvage. Uh, I don't even know if they're salvageable at this point. Um, I think they're going to bring him in as a standalone guy and they're probably going to give him a push. Um, I mean, just going by, we've seen, you know, if you can't cut it elsewhere, your former impact person and I, I know he was let go so i mean that wasn't you know necessarily his fault but you know you go and strike out elsewhere you can always come back home and uh like you never left <laughs> yeah that's true he's a young guy too he's only 28 so you know that's that's the type of guy you want to build up i think with his look uh, i think they'll he'll he'll get a significant push um but yeah, uh, it, it's crazy. I wonder why he didn't make it in NXT. Who knows? I mean, there's always that, you know, they just sign people and then just there's no vision and they end up just going by the wayside. Well, it's actually sarcasm because okay. you remember, <laughs> remember, I mean, I remember him being ter- terrible and during his tenure. I mean, I know he had improved and well, yeah, no, I, ba, I, right? Huh? He was teaming with Fala Ba, wasn't he, when they came in? I don't remember, but I just thought that shuffle stuff kind of made him as a kind of a joke. And now since they, you, you know, the product is tailored more to an adult type thing, you know, scene, like I think that shuffle won't go over as as much. But no, I agree with you. I know they sign, tend to sign a lot of people that they have no use for. But um, it's just it's funny. Like we see some of the people that that uh, are in impact or even then TNA and how they were utilized and, you know, they go over there and, you know, some of them, you know, what, if they do make it to the, you know, raw or SmackDown, like think about like EC3, how they use him. Like it's easy to, to, you know, forget that, you know, just because what worked over in one company doesn't mean it's going to actually get you over in another. So that's why versatility is, versatility is everything. Being able to change your gimmick or, you know, some of the stuff that you do, um, that'll lead to success. But, yeah, I guess he comes back. Um, yeah, I, I think he'll be used in a, a in a greater role. I don't think he'll be associated with yeah. the Desi his squad. Yeah, I was thinking of Mario Bakara, who was teaming with Falaba. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Shara had that uh that short lived feud with Congo Kong, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. That's what I thought. And you got a good memory. <laughs> uh, you know, it's little things in here and there that I remember. But that was during I think the GFW days, so that was that was a disaster anyway. <laughs> Which yeah, that's still going on with Jarrett and Anthem and it, it, it's just again a disaster. Yeah, like many things. Um, you know, the the two things I wanted to touch on, uh, well, actually three, and I'll I'll try to limit the rants. Um, the first thing was, and I I had asked you, I want your take on it. Um, you know, we've seen Gail Kim and 
the past weeks be very vocal on uh, social media, you know, talking about, you know, being critical of WWE and, you know, she's just sharing from her own personal experience. And, you know, a lot of times people are asking her or like it's an interview and, you know, she has that right because she's been there. You know, nobody knows how she felt. And, you know, she was misused during her time there. But I ask you, uh, Keith, do you feel that it's she's better served to not, you know, responding at all because it could come across as just being bitter? Absolutely. Yeah, there's there's I mean, like I said, I get it. I understand that. But. You know, and we've seen it with some Impact fans that had voiced their displeasure on the fact that she's being interviewed and all she's talking about is WWE stuff rather than putting over the company that she works for when you're featured heavily in a pay-per-view coming up. And in, in, I understand, like, I think, and maybe, too, the only reason why they're, she's getting interviewed is because she used to be with them. Maybe they don't want to hear about impact. But I think with that, if you're that much of a company person, then you're like, hey, look, this is my new employer. Or not my new employer, but this has been my employer. You know, I'll touch on it. But if it's not going to be anything that just as it pertains to impact and um, the pay-per-view that we're having, Rebellion, you know, get that way you plug it, then I don't want to partake in that. Right. You know, no. um, but I, I just see kind of like, you know, and we see this with a lot of talent. They seem so easily triggered. Like, you know, people say something and, you know, they go on these rants and stuff. And it's like, you know, you're a celebrity. This is just Joe in Iowa. And you're over here getting all worked up. Like, just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I, I don't I don't understand why half the time talent responds. And then, um, you know, I, I know we had touched on with this management. Um Look, I've been very critical of Don. I used to be high on him until I kind of just felt like, you know, a lot of the stuff we were getting lip service. Um, you know, I feel I feel like they're doing a lot of things that are no different from Dixie. Um, a prime example is this past week we had gotten, you know, news like, oh, there's this big news that we're going to reveal and have something about a partnership. And I think you and I both kind of, you know, felt like, oh, don't hold your breath. It's not going to be anything big mm -hmm. just because from previous regimes or even, and I think this one a couple months ago when they talked about they were signing somebody only to find out they re-signed Rosemary. And it's like, it's not that the news is bad news. Like the, the news that we got this week was them uh, uh, teaming with uh, Booker T's reality of wrestling. Mm -hmm. But it's just the way that they pump it up. Like, you know, a lot of us is thinking like it's going to be something big. It's like, hey, some news about a, you know, potential TV deal or, you know, another show or something like that. And it just seems every time they, you know, pump these things up, it, it usually ends up being a letdown. And that's something that's no different than Dixie. Dixie was notorious for doing that stuff. And, you know, it's, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me tw twice, shame on me, you know, type type of thing. So I just kind of feel like with this regime, like we're seeing some of a lot of the stuff that the promises that Don had made, um, it just, just seems like lip service. And that's why I kind of had uh, soured on him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, my last thing, and I know, you know, this might ruffle some feathers, but oh boy, you know, <laughs> not, not to that degree, but <laughs> I, I don't think. But you know, I think you know the news had came out that uh, A AEW might uh, land on TNT. Mm -hmm. or they're talking about TNT and Showtime, and I know the word out was they're gonna have to pay to be on TNT, and you know, you folks can take shots at that, but it just makes me wonder, like. Where was impact in these talks when they were talking about trying to get a TV TV deal? You know, we were all under the impression of, you know, a lot of uh, TV TV networks. They're not big on wrestling. So that's why it was hard to shop it. And then now here we see now. And like I said, it's just all talks. We don't know. A lot of this stuff can just be bull. But, you know, you just wonder if it is true. Where was impact in these talks? Why weren't they able to? even sit at the table with a TNT or some of these big networks, you know, they've been on television. I mean, the company has been running now for what going on 17 years. Like where were the, where were they at these talks? Why is AEW getting these opportunities that impact it hasn't and AEW hasn't even pro produced an actual show? Yeah, no, it's, it's a fair point. We also did uh, find out yesterday that, uh, was it Keith Mitchell who I guess was, uh, he was a backstage producer 
that. I think he had worked for WCW and TNA back in the day as well, but uh, he has left the company to go to AEW, and uh, now this is putting more weight on other people in the company, which you know was part of the reason that Sanjay had left the company, because he was wearing more hats than he felt he should. Yeah, you're, you know, you're wearing your employers thin. Um, I think trying to be, uh, and I understand, you know, they're all on budget. And, you know, the, the one thing, even though I don't think they need props on it, because that's just, <laughs> you know, every employee should do it. Like we see now, we don't ever hear about talent not getting paid. And like, that was one thing that was as good that they were able to clean up. But um, yeah, um, you can't r- r- run your you know, your people thin, and that's kind of reason why sometimes we see with whether it's the production or other things that it lacks because you know you're having the one person who's probably doing commentaries doing this and in charge of this and in charge of that, like you know that takes its toll on uh, people. Right. But but uh, um, yeah, it's just it's, it's interesting, man. And uh, I see a lot of fans, you know, you know, from both, you know, not only Impact but uh, um. WWE people, you know, so you know, ready to they want AEW to fail. I don't know why, but I think though too is just because you know there is that potential threat. Let alone if they land on TNT, because anyone who has cable, um, mm-hmm. you're you're gonna get that. Um, if anything, I think them thriving. I mean, it could help Impact in the sense of if they ever wanted to try to get back on tv and maybe another network sees like hey you know wrestling is cool and it's profitable hey you know there's there's this company but once again you know they got to be able to get that conversation at the table and i just kind of just believe that it was never kind of in the works i think they wanted to go digital and that's why we see twitch being promoted the way that it's been promoted yep that's true um and that's uh that's pretty much all we got right yeah, um, we're after tomorrow. We're gonna be a week away from Rebellion. Um, I'm sure next week we'll not only cover the show, but I guess we'll probably do some previews. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do predictions on the show. I, I think that's that's pretty fair. And then the week after, we'll probably review Rebellion along with the post Rebellion show, which is uh, one I am looking forward to. I think. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how things move forward post rebellion, just because it feels like this will be hopefully a blow off for a lot of feuds, and we'll get some new things going on. Keyword hope. Hope. That's it. <laughs> hope. But all right, man. Thanks for joining me again this week. We had a good show. Thanks everybody for listening, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.